Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well and having a fantastic week. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about molting. It's a very stressful time of year for our birds and for us as well. So I wanted to talk about what molting is and what it involves and also ways that you can help your bird when they are molting. So what is molting? Molting is where your bird will lose all of their feathers and replace them all over a series of weeks. It's a perfectly natural and normal process. And sometimes it happens once a year, sometimes it happens twice a year. It totally depends on the individual and various factors, including climate and genetics as well. Typically a lot of feathers will fall out symmetrically, especially on the wings because that helps birds to still be able to fly rather than being a bit kind of off balance. And also birds are going to be typically more agitated during this time because when feathers are coming in they're quite itchy, sometimes a little bit painful as well. So we need to be a little bit patient with our birds and ourselves as well because they are going to be a bit more moody. But we can try and help them get through this molting process, you guys are very active today, um, and we can just help them kind of be a bit more comfortable and get through it together. Some birds will also go through what's known as a harsh molt, where they lose a lot of feathers in one go, and they look really, really scruffy. Uh, again, that's not uncommon, but again, most birds are going to be particularly moody during this time. Now, I also have a whole video on feather health, so if you have any questions about how to keep your bird's feathers in good condition, or you have any questions about what they look like, I'll leave a card right now and a link in the description so you can go and check that out after this video. But the first way that we can help our birds with molting is to preen them. We can play with their feathers, we can help release some of those feather casings, but you have to be super, super gentle, because if you pick out a feather casing that's not quite ready, your bird is going to scream and they're gonna tell you off for it. So if your bird is comfortable being preened, just do it very gently and um, just kind of work through all those pin feathers. You'll be absolutely covered in feather casing, but at least you'll be releasing those feathers. If your bird doesn't like to be preened and you want to train them to enjoy being scritched, David has a whole video on that. I'll leave a card for it now, link in the description. There's gonna be a lot of links in the description, but hopefully that'll help you if your bird doesn't really like being touched at the moment. Feathers are actually made up of about 90% protein, and the protein they're made up of is keratin. And that's the same stuff as our hair and our fingernails. So with these being made up of protein, we need to make sure that our birds are getting access to bioavailable proteins in their diet. Now when molting is happening, you can give them a small amount extra of protein, but we don't want to be overloading them with loads more nutrition, because then that can potentially trigger hormonal behaviour, which is obviously something we don't want to encourage. So some of the ways that you can add bioavailable protein to your bird's diet is through sprouts. Again, I've got a video on sprouting if you've never tried it before, but there are lots of different kind of grains and legumes and things like that that you can sprout. Some you shouldn't as well, so make sure you check out that video. But sprouting is an amazing way of getting these healthy foods into your birds. They are fantastic. They're high Highly nutritious as well so I recommend sprouting for your bird. The other thing you can do is offer garden peas. They have a high amount of protein in them and they are a favourite across all of my birds. And the other thing you can do is offer a small amount of organic free range egg. Now I know not everyone's diets accommodate things like eggs so if that's not for you that's absolutely fine but if you would like to add a little bit of egg into your bird's diet I recommend either plain scrambled egg so nothing added no butter salt or anything like that or plain boiled egg. Just give them a very small amount, they don't need loads of it, but that extra boost of nutrition can help them to kind of continue to create these feathers and get the molt over and done with as soon as possible. Now one of the most common ways to help birds with molting is to offer regular bathing because bathing is going to help loosen up those feather casings, it's going to help the feathers come out and it's also just going to kind of soothe their skin a little bit. So if we can help them with bathing then that's awesome but not all birds enjoy bathing, not all birds enjoy bathing in the same way as well. For example my cockatiels really like the spray bottle here, this is from Northern Parrots, whereas my conyers like to go under our kitchen sink which has a nice little shower function uh, and they love to bathe under there into a little bowl. So every bird is different as to how they're going to like to bathe and how frequently as well but again <laughs> you'll not be surprised to know I've got a whole video on bathing all the different kinds of bathing and also how you can train your bird to enjoy bathing because there are a lot of birds out there who don't like it so make sure you check out that video too um, so you can help your bird feel a bit more comfortable during the molting season
Now something that's essential with all birds, not just during molting, is to have an air purifier because they're going to be kicking up loads of this feather casing and dust. It's going to be going everywhere, it's going to be in the air and of course birds have a very sensitive respiratory system. So if we can have a purifier in the home, it can help to uh, take up all of that dust and keep them nice and safe and it's also really good for you as well and just good for birds in general, not just during molting season as I said. So we have one from Lavoit, um, it's awesome, it's really good, it actually tells us like how many particles are in the air and it gives us an idea of colour ratings and whether the air is good or bad. So um, I'll leave a link in the description of two that we have, we've got a small one and a big one uh, and of course in my Amazon store there's lots of different things that you can have a little look at including the air purifiers if you want to check it out but if you're getting any kind of air purifier you need to make sure that it is a HEPA filter, it has a carbon filter but also that it does not have an ionising function because ionising functions are dangerous to birds so you don't want to have that on your purifier, you want a HEPA filter and a carbon filter but as I said the two that I've got linked down in the description are perfectly safe for birds if you want to go in and have a look at those. Now when you have got all of your birds feathers, one of the things I like to do is keep them. If they're in good condition, I like to display them in this little jar. Uh, I've got all five of the birds feathers in here. You can do loads of different crafts. I've seen people make them into earrings before, bookmarks, um, things on the wall as well. So it's really fun to save them. Now sometimes it's also worth saving feathers, especially from the wings, for birds who need to have a process called imping done. Now this is where a bird has had a traumatic experience and has lost all of their feathers too quickly. And in certain circumstances, not all of them, some vets can actually add these uh, feathers that have been molted out by other birds onto this bird's wing so they can fly again. It's not very common and not all vets know how to do it, but sometimes, especially for big birds, it's really important uh, that you can actually access all of these different feathers to go all along the wing. So if you can save them, you may actually help another bird out later down the line. That brings me to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about how you can help your birds during molting. If you have any other molting tips as well, do let me know down in the comments as I'd love to speak to you. Or if you have any questions on molting, again, I'd love to speak to you as well. Loads of links in the description if you want to go and check those out. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and see you later.